Hello and welcome back. And in today's lecture, I would like to talk more about XOR gateway. This is the symbol for it. And it's called just XOR gateway. So it's the simplest gateway in BPMN, but it is one of the most powerful because when it acts as a split, it takes one outgoing branch and only one. And when it acts as join, so standing before another action, it proceeds when only one incoming branch has completed. It's a completely exclusive gateway that has either one incoming branch or one outgoing branch. So let's take a look at a couple examples and you will get a better understanding of what I'm talking about. So the first example we're gonna take a look at, it's just a part of a process of ordering pizza. So let's say you've been, you've completed all of the steps and one of the last steps you need to do is pick a topping for your pizza and you will have an XOR join here, an XOR split here, sorry. And you will have a couple of toppings to choose for, uh, to choose from. You can put in anything you like. I will just basically go with chicken, then some tuna, and then some pineapple. So now we'll have another uh, extra join on this side and let's say just a random task here. So let's go and quickly connect all of these elements together. And so now we have an extra split and followed by some actions and then an extra join. So what this means is that when the process comes to this point, picking a pizza topping, we will select only one outgoing branch. And then once that action is completed, we will then go to this extra join and it will be activated only when one branch is completed and then we'll proceed further on with our process. How do we determine which outgoing branch we will take, we will follow? Well, this is where conditioning comes in. So this is a very simple example and doesn't have any logical value. But for example, you might say that we'll pick chicken if, you know, we want chicken. Then we will pick tuna if we want tuna. And finally, sorry, let's just put it there. And finally, we will pick pineapples if we want pineapples. I know this doesn't make much sense, but it shouldn't. It's just an example just to understand how this works. So what's happening here is when the token gets to this XOR split, we will take a look at the conditions and then based on them we will go one way or another. When the XOR gateway acts as a XOR join, we do not need any conditions because logically we would only take one branch that's coming into the join. So for example here if we want tuna we'll go tuna then this gateway will be activated and then the process will com be completed. And I would like to show you another thing that's very important with any gateway except the end gateway, which we will take a look later on. So with any gateway in BPMN except the end gateway, it's a very good idea to put default sequence. So this is how it looks. It's just a sequence flow with a little dash on the other side. So what this means, is you will connect the uh, this default flow to your gateway and to another action to only one outgoing branch. So default sequence prevents us from having any troubles with the gateway. So in case we do not know what we want, either we want chicken or tuna or pineapples, default sequence flow indicates in that case we will go for pineapple. You still name it. So you still say, so it's a very important BPM and element subtype of sequence flow that you will use with almost every gateway out there that acts as a split. 
when the gateway acts as a join, there's nothing to worry about. So in this example, another thing I want to point out is that this XOR join is called explicit gateway because we do not need it. Uh, why we don't need it is because we have an XOR split here, we will still have only one branch activated at any time with any condition. So if I was to remove this gateway and then remove all this sequence flow and connect these actions to each other, business process model would still make clear sense because only one branch can be activated at a time. That means that random task will only be activated after one of these activities has been finished. But as you can see, this might cause some confusion to a user reading the model without any particular knowledge of VPMN, or it just might cause confusion in the big models where you have a lot, a lot, a lot of gate. In my experience, it's better to put explicit gateways just to avoid that confusion. Now let's take a look at an example where Exor Gateway shows why it's so important and how good it can be when used correctly. So let's take an example of filling a random survey. Let's just take a closer look at the small part of that survey. So here you'll need to choose color and then you'll have an Exor Gateway in your process model. So we'll connect this. And now we'll connect the XOR split to two different actions. So one will be named win a car and another one will be named lose everything. So now we'll just connect the XOR gateway to both of these actions. And now let's give each branch a condition. So here we'll say red and here we'll say blue. So now you can see how powerful the XOR split engine is because you can have, so you can have hundreds, even thousands of different conditions after the split, but only one will be activated when the token comes to this gateway. And based on which action will be activated, the whole process will go into a whole new direction. So this is again a very exclusive gateway and it's very good to use when you have to pick only one. So there are countless of examples out there and you will find that you will be using XOR gateway split a lot. Probably it's gonna be your most used gateway. On the other hand, the XOR join is only used as shown in the example before when you're making an explicit gateway to show people what's happening. Before we end today's lecture, I would like to show you one more example uh, with the use of XOR Gateway. To save us a bit of time, I'm gonna cut the video here and show it back like this. Okay, so as you can see, this is a process of publishing a book, but it's another simplified version of it. So basically we have the book ready, we're submitting the book to the publisher. They proofread the book, correct any found mistakes, review the book, and if there were any errors found, they proofread it again, correct all the mistakes again, review the book again, and go and then if no errors are found, they publish the book and in the end we have the book published. So What's so interesting here is that we're actually using an XOR gateway split as a way to loop the activities, meaning that until there are no errors found, we will be continuing to prove read the book, correcting all mistakes and reviewing the books again. So this is another way of using XOR splits as you can understand, it can be very important in your business process model. The important thing about this example and about this usage of XOR splits is you need to have an activity before the XOR split that will determine if we're ready to pass the split or we need to keep going back. In our case, it's the review the book action because 
when we review the book, do the final review, if we don't find any mistakes, any errors, then we will publish the book. But if we will find, we will keep proofreading the book and correcting all the errors until there are no errors found. So here we have another example of how to use an XOR split gateway. This is not the only loop engine we have in BPMN. There are a lot more. This is not the only loop engine in BPMN, but this is the simplest one and it is still used quite a lot because of its simplicity. So this is all for today's lecture. Thank you for your time and I'll see you in the next one. I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial and until next time, happy modeling.